You're listening to Jones's Jukebox on KLOS. <laughs> How are you? It's great to be back. It is, uh, it's, it's uh, 10 after 12 bells on a Wednesday. Beautiful. Temperature's nice. 405 was bearable. And here we are, KLOS, Culver City. <laughs> <laughs> That was the Pretenders, Mystery Achievement. Before that was Kinks, Lola. My guest is Alan White, former Morrissey guitarist and songwriter. Is that correct, Alan White? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you for confirming that for me. I want to make <laughs> sure I had the right Alan White in the studio. Yeah, there's a lot of other Alan Whites out there. But fact, I should have been called Alan Y. But, but, uh, but your white is spelt differently right yeah with a y so it's w y h y t e oh, oh, why yeah. is it why is that different than a regular old white well, most, pe most people are called yeah exactly yeah emotion uh, emotion yeah i guess my parents stirred up my emotion no, no. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um now my dad's scottish so it's okay, a very so scottish last name that spelling though that way of spelling it yeah White. Well, there's white, and, there's white and Mackay whiskey. So, but unfortunately, I'm not related to them, so I'm not drunk or if, rich. If you was related to them, <laughs> you wouldn't be here. I probably wouldn't. No, I'd probably be in rehab. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what's going on, pal? I ain't seen you in a while. Um, just same old, same old. Life is busy, but um, it's you, nice because I've decided to go solo. <coughs> so. Yeah, you know, and I I plan to kind of like release four song EPs every three to four months. So hopefully I could build up some consistency. Do you, you would like to go on the road with it, with your songs and stuff? If it makes sense, I mean, like like you, you know, if it makes sense financially and it's enjoyable, then yes. Yeah, you know, well, good I, luck I, there we, with we, the financially bit. Yeah, really, right? I mean, like I said, we're kind of like long in the tooth to play games you know I thought, but the, the thing i've always admired about you is you've always been straight up and gone like i want this and people make that happen for you you know what i mean you got to know your own self-worth and yeah. you know it's important i want a billion dollars i think you could get it is anyone out there going to make it happen <laughs> 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 there's enough people out there that could make it happen for you steve you're a legend mate. all right i'll take half a million there you go. I'm not going any lower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, but, but you've written, not just with Morrissey, you, you've, do you still write with like pop people? I do from time to time. There's a, a group of songwriters that I, I connect with that are more connected with mainstream. mainstream pop stuff like Chris Brown and Madonna and that. So... They get me involved. Like I'm the organics guy. I go in there and put bass and guitars and all that kind of stuff and pianos down for them. And um, yeah, it's nice. You know, it's nice to get credited, like doing songs for people like that. It's not necessarily a lot of it's not necessarily my cup of tea. Yeah, but, but that's you know, the, that's all right. That's work is work, isn't it? Ain't yeah. about cup of tea. But most of the time, oh, the weirdly enough, most. The, the most money I make is from like TV lic licenses. Yeah. You know, writing music for TV shows. And I get together with other singers and just make up songs. Yeah. You know, and just pitch them for TV and they get picked. It's a lot of fun that, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you have any songs in any big shows? Um, I've, I've landed quite a lot of songs on, uh, do you remember that show Gossip Girl? Uh -huh. I landed some well I landed some songs on that show and um right now I've been landing some tunes more like malt shop oldies type tunes like 50s recording tunes um what's going on I don't know someone walks uh, out the door and turns the lights out <laughs> um malt shop oldies 50s type songs for Riverdale that TV show yeah. Riverdale that's been a lot of fun I mean, I grew up on all that stuff, all that 50s stuff, like yourself. You know, you, you're a big fan of Cliff, aren't you? Cliff, Cliff Richard, Richard and the yeah, Shadows. Absolutely. Great stuff, man. And and uh, Hank Marvin, he was terrific, wasn't he? 
one of the best, I think. You ever met him? No, but I do have a signed photo of him that's a buddy of mine got from him when he was, I don't know, because he lives in uh, Australia. I think he lives in uh, Adelaide or one of them oh, wow. places. But I've got a signed picture of him. That's amazing. Saying to Steve, Hank Marvin. Yeah, brilliant. But I've got, I love them uh, Fiesta Red uh, Strats. Oh, yeah. I've actually got a couple, and I'm I'm actually getting them changed now because they, the pickups in them guitars, man, they just ben. make it's like a dentist shop, you know. They just <laughs> it doesn't stop. It doesn't matter what position you're in, they're like. Ehh. But I'm getting them noise, uh, the ones I'm getting the pickups put in. They are really noisy, aren't they, Strat? Especially on the the treble switch. Yeah. Like, yeah. What is that a it, fault with them or something? A single coil. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's a thing. You know, but yeah. I, I, it drives me nuts. Yeah, it drives me a bit crazy, you know. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, what are you going to do? What can you do? I'm going to do a video soon on, on the Instagram. Excellent. Um, of, a, of, a, of a Shadows uh, song. With Brilliant. My, with my Fiesta Red. What, guitar. Apache or... or a, a, Apache, what's that? Oh, it's an instrumental, wasn't it? I'm, I'm uh, kidding, Shadows I'm kidding. Like yes, that's the one I was going to do. Darn it. Gosh, darn it. ruined it. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I can't do it now. Oh, what other one could we do? It's pretty easy to play that. So yeah, that's brilliant. How long was you uh, with uh, the Moz? I was with him from 1991 to... Live wise till 2004, but I was still his main songwriter up until like 2009. Yeah. So a good, you know, 14 years live and maybe 16 or, what, you know. What was you doing prior to, to being involved with him? Was you. Oh, dude, I was. Was you in bands and stuff? Yeah, I was in bands, but, you know, I was in, um, I was in a rockabilly band just for fun. Yeah. With Gary and Spencer. You know, the original members of uh, the Morrissey band. And we all, like, joined his band. And then uh, this other guy, Mark Nevin, uh, from Fairground Attraction, was writing a lot of stuff Fairground for Morrissey. Fairground Attraction. Do you remember them? No, it's just a funny name. Oh, they were pretty, pretty popular. I have a character on Instagram called Fairground Ted. Amazing. I bet he's legendary. Oh, I yeah. like the railroad one, the railway one, the railway Ted. Yeah. that you did. He was the best. I was laughing so hard over that because there are teddy boys that are literally like that. They're you still know? like that, yeah. Yeah. Can't let the older 50s rock and roll go. It's well, the same with punks. Though. There's a lot of punks who... It's it's a, it's the next thing, you know? Yeah, it, it was, you know. Um, it's a big deal to a lot of people, you know, 50s and punk, you know. It was, you know. I never really understood... Um, I think... You know, anyway, back, just pedal back. Like, Mark Nevin pulled out and I got Boz in. Yeah. But, you know, your thing with about the Teddy Boys and the Punks, that thing really kicked off, I think, in 76. And it only happened because, from what I can gauge, I think the Teddy Boys got offended with the Punks for slashing up the drapes or putting pins Well, that's it. And, they thought we were taking the mick, you yeah. know, wearing brothel creepers and all that. Yeah. But, like, Punk was amazing, really, if you... It was like the 70s Same version concept. in the way of rock same and roll concept. and rockabilly because it was shocking and outrageous. Yeah, same and concept. Youthful exuberance and attitude. It was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think a lot of rockabillies and secretly liked the Sex Pistols and liked punk. But they could, so. they, oh yeah, they did. I, I know for a fact, my brother for one, he, he loved, he loved the Pistols. But you could never, he could never own up to it at a club, you know. It was like, ooh, you know. Was he older than you? He was. He was three years older than me, yeah. yeah. How long have you been living in the States? I've been living here now for uh, 12 years. Yeah? Yeah. Quite you, a while now. You like it? I've gotten used to it. I like the weather and um, um, it took a while to get used to because I was used to busy streets and the hustle and bustle. and In London? In London, yeah. Yeah, because it's not busy here at all. No, you could walk down the street and not meet a soul. Do you know what I mean? Where? 
here in LA. You can well, walk... What street's that? I want to find the street. Oh, you want to find the street? <laughs> uh, take me to Nowhere Street, please. Please? Please, I don't want to see anybody. Nobody. Exterminate them. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, man. Exterminate. I... <laughs> Get rid of them. These fools. How dare they? Surrounded by jack and apes. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Did you watch the uh, the uh, Golden Globes? I didn't. Yeah. No, I mean... You're not interested in that this kind of stuff? Not really. Um, I've got to be honest, you know, the CMAs and the Brit Awards and the Music Awards and, you know, Golden Globes and that, it's all the usual suspects, you know. Something yeah. really needs to change. Um, you know, people are crying out like there's death of rock bands and all that kind of stuff. There isn't. It's just not being heard. Mm -hmm. And I think once, I mean, I don't know, but I'm, I wonder if Spotify and Apple Music will eventually merge and then create a super chart. And oh, hopefully man. that chart will dictate what gets played on the radio so you don't get lumbered with the 20, 25 usual suspects all the time. Yeah. Because you you could be on the CMA, you know, awards, and all of a sudden it's like Kanye West is with Taylor Swift. You know, you're like, why is a R and B dude doing at the CMA awards? You know, no offense to Kanye, but you know what I mean. It's like, and vice versa. You know, it's yeah. it's just all the usual suspects. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you gonna do? What can we do? I want to find a street with nobody. Around where the streets have no, no names. names, like as you two had said, you know what's really funny? There's that that joke. I saw a joke recently. It was like Bono and the Edge walk into the bar, and the barman goes, "Not you two again." <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's not bad. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> You've heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Should we play some music? You've got uh, first the gang to die here. We're going to play that then, I guess. Yes. We could. No, you think we're going to play it? He's talking about playing it. Oh, he could play it on there if you want. We can play it. We can both have a go. Yes, that oh. sounds like fun. Uh, Jonesy's Jude Box on Careless with my guest, Alan White. And, uh, yes, take it away then. You're listening to Jonesy's Jude Box on Careless. That was you too. Where the streets have no name. And the people got exterminated. They really did get taken <laughs> care of. Before that <laughs> was Morrissey, first of the gang to die. A song that you co-wrote with uh, Mr. Morrissey, correct? Yeah, I did. You know, it, it, it was funny. I was trying to think what that song reminded me of. And I realized I must have subliminally ripped off Billy Don't Be a Hero by Paper Lace. Yeah. So I remember growing up with that song and loving it as a kid. I think it was released in 75, maybe? Yeah, how old are you then? I'm 51. Yeah, okay. So I'm slightly behind you. Yeah, But slightly. we grew up on a lot of the same kind Similar. of music. Top of yeah. the Pops. Top of the Pops, The Who, kind the 50s stuff. stuff and all yeah. that kind of stuff. We grew up with the same I don't, stuff. I don't hear the similarity, though, from Billy... Don't be a hero. Don't be a fool if you lie. I don't know what it is. It's First just most of the gang to die. No, I know it's totally different, but I think it maybe it's because it's the same key or something. I mm. don't know. I don't know. It's weird. Okay. I could be totally off. Y you're okay. <laughs> it's the way you think. It's fine. Oh, thank you. So kind. Oh, so kind. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, what was it like working with uh, Mick Ronson on, the, oh, God. on, on he was, your Arsenal, right? He was great. I mean, he was... Was he well at that point? He wasn't... No, no he, one knew. he was really sick. And um, What year was that? 90? 91. Yeah. We were recording at Wall Hall. And, you know, he, he had a juicer and was making natural shakes you know with yeah. carrots and vegetables and all kinds of stuff in the kitchen and he'd be well enough and he'd be recording but there'd be times when he had to go and lie down Knackered. he wasn't feeling too good but he was the kindest loveliest soul and what a 
fantastic guitar player he was. Yeah. I mean, he really was. He's my, he's my main man. Uh, he, he was a legend, man. He was he was the nicest guy, and I think in an odd way, he was very encouraging towards me. Um, and maybe he saw like like a young version of him in me or something, because he would have been a rocker, you know, back in the day. Sure. Just starting out on guitar, and I wasn't really that good at that time playing wise. But um, I think he saw the elements that reminded him. Maybe, but he, he he just was so nice. I remember. Was he still smoking at this point? No, no, he he'd long given that up. Did he look ill, like skinny? He was really skinny, yeah, but he didn't he didn't look deathly skinny. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was he was skinny. Do you think he uh, contributed a lot to that record? Oh, immensely. Ar I mean, arrangements and whatnot. Um, not so much on the arrangements, mind you. Having said that. We had recorded Seasick Yet Still Docked and it was just like two acoustic guitars and then we started laying like, you know, some double bass on there, or upright bass as the Americans call it, and um, some electric guitar, you know, like more lead stuff. Yeah. And there was a sound effect of a boat that I think Boz Bora had put into the song, probably under Morrissey's yeah. guidance or supervision. And then... You know, we, we we walked out one evening. We came back the next day, and Mick goes, "Hey, I'll come up with this like I'll put some like Ebo guitars down like on this track. Well, you want to have a listen?" He hit play, and our jaws just hit the floor. It was like really euphoric and really heavenly sounding. It was yeah. just amazing. Yeah, it's multi layers of just atmosphere like yeah. Ebo guitars. Yeah, and he he was a genius like that. He was, he was great. What was it like? Was you in the studio when Morrissey would, would sing? Was he funny like that? Did he like no one around Morrissey in the studio? A lot of the time he didn't like people around when he, when he would sing. Yeah. There was the odd occasions when we, we could sit in the back of the control room, but obviously he couldn't see us or... I'm curious of, <clears> of, of how <throat> Mick Ronson dealt with him as far as doing vocal tracks. I think, I think Morrissey felt very at ease with Mick. Because of who he was. Because of who he was, and also because he was such a kind, nice soul. Like, yeah. he was such a lovely person, like, amazing person. Yeah. And uh, I was really upset when he died, yeah. really upset. Yeah. You know, yeah. we well, loved him. Yeah, absolutely. And he didn't get as the credit he deserved, but, you know, I think he will down the road. It's disgusting. He's an absolute legend. Yeah. I mean, his guitar playing is absolutely brilliant. He was tracking like a, a cover of like a rolling stone bob yeah, dylan's song yeah. um in downtime for himself and, yeah for himself and morrissey was fine about it. he's like yeah go ahead you know and he was laying down guitars and just watching him it was great yeah it's just like wow man this guy's really got it you know he's yeah. got the chops and everything yeah it's just amazing do you think uh do you think um what was i gonna say I'm 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 just curious in the studio, how how say, like do you, do you just let Morrissey get on with doing his vocals, or do you say, oh, can you change a little bit there, and can you do stuff like that with him? I can't nah, see that. Yeah. Nah. I there was it was funny. I did one song with him, or wrote one song called Air Apparent. Yeah. And it was really I was hear, hearing it his vocal melody. And I wanted him to just change one note. Yeah, yeah. You know, because it was so repetitive. Yeah, yeah. I came here in my old city with this da 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 And I was like, God, it, it, it would benefit if he just dropped like a note down, like I a whole you. tone, just I on this you. one bit. And but I wanted to mention it, but yeah, I couldn't. It would really. have probably made things worse, right? Well, not really. I mean, he would have, he would have listened probably. But that he wouldn't have done it. So really, what you're saying is you want him to go, ha ha ha, as opposed to ha ha ha. Exactly. Ha 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 ha. Oh, we hate it when our friends become successful. It's actually, you know. How's that go? It goes. Uh, <laughs>
<laughs> we hate it when our friends become successful. We hate it when our friends become successful. Oh, look at those clothes and those faces so old. And the video well, it's really laughable. Ah, 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 we hate it when our friends become successful And if they're northern, that makes it even worse And <laughs> if we could destroy them You bet your life we will destroy them If we can hurt them, well we may as well It's really laughable ha 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 it should have been me It could have been me Everybody knows Cause everybody says so They say Oh, you have loads of songs So many songs More songs than they could stand Chorus, chorus, mid late break, fade. Just listen, la 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 You know, lyrically... That's the great... He's a great lyricist, man. That The lyric... I didn't realise how brilliant that song the lyrics are was great. lyrically. Because you know, everyone it, is like that, especially in England. Oh, People it, will resent you if, you if you become something. They resent the hell out of you. It's funny, you know, because... Maybe here, too. When we joined this band, me, Gary and Spencer, because we were on the rockabilly scene, there were a lot of other rockabillies that were trying to latch on and join this band, and they were envious of us. Yeah. And I said, oh, you know, there's a lot of rockabilly dudes at the club that are really unhappy that we've joined your band, like they're super jealous. And I wonder if that inspired the song, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. But lyrically, it's outstanding. And it's funny as well. Yeah. I mean, Morrissey's so dry, brilliant at that. You know, it's very 60s, like almost Terry Thomas kind of yeah. like humour. No, Marvellous spiffing. <laughs> Hard cheese. No, he's he, <laughs> he's he's a, he's, a, he's a great he's a great lyricist. He really is. Um, let's get back to your EP, Alan White, The Experiment. Yes. Is that what it's called? Yeah, the EP's called The Experiment, and it really came about. It was funny. I was experimenting in keyboard sounds for some reason, and I found like this sound called Indian strings. And I was like, oh, that sounds really good. And I had this little riff that was a little bit like Dear Prudence or something. Yeah. And I I wrote like literally four mm. chords. It was kind of like, you know, I like. And I had that forever. I was like, well, that's, that's pretty cool. I started laying down bass and drums on it and put down some guitars and I got stuck and I left it for three weeks. And I just, it was a working title, I just called it Experiment. And then about three or four weeks later, I came back, I was like, oh, I got another part, like B flat. Yeah. Which is a bit Bowie-ish, you know. Yeah. And then E flat, you know. And I was like, oh, I could throw that in there. And then lyrically, I got inspired. I was like, wait a minute, the experiment could be a song questioning about, you know, what is... The meaning of getting up every day like what is the meaning of our existence and you know is there god is there life after death is there all these things so it ended up just being a question about openness and about like what is everything uh well we're going to play a track off it thank we're, you we're going to play the experiment i believe oblivion, oblivion. 
Yes, this, well, this is more of a rocker. I thought we could play experiment on Okay, but. we're here with uh, Alan White, and uh, this is his EP, The Experiment, and we're playing Oblivion, Jonesy's Jukebox, Callaway. Good old Mick. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox, Carl OS, with my guest, Alan White. Hello. How are you, Alan? I'm great. I'm so uh, happy to be on the show with you, mate. It's, uh, it's always fun. I concur. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Du bonnet? Otherwise, I'd have a boot print on my behind and be mm -hmm. out of here. Be Exterminate him. Be more than a boot print, <laughs> I assure you. Oh, mm. my God, I say. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the uh, that was the version that, uh, that Mick was doing when you were doing your Arsenal. Possibly, I'm not. I'm not sure. But it it, it was funny because he he said to me, "Hey, you know, I'm I'm playing at Wembley Stadium. I'm going to get up and play with with Bowie. Do you want to come and you want to come to the gig?" I was like, "Yeah, all right." So the whole band went except Morrissey, and uh, we watched him play heroes with Bowie so I haven't played with Bowie for 25 years where was this at at Wembley Stadium it was the legendary Freddie Mercury tribute okay gig. okay and uh, George Michael was fronting Queen and he did an outstanding job yeah. he was fantastic yeah. he really was so we get backstage and my mind was literally blown it was like do you remember um David Oxterby a painter who did Oxterby's rockers it was a book, and he, he'd draw, like, you know, Marilyn Monroe with James Dean and Elvis all sitting in a diner yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was literally like Oxterby's rockers in this room. There was Robert Plant, Roger Daltrey, David Bowie, like Elton John, all the guys from Queen, George Michael. I mean, it was like, who isn't in this room? Yeah, I wasn't. And I'd met Bowie a year prior to that, with Morrissey and it he blew my mind a little bit he walked right over to me and he was like oh hello Alan how you doing I couldn't believe he remembered my name yeah I was like oh my god you know it just it totally blew my mind but that just shows you how classy Bowie was and how nice he was as a person you know he really he was really awesome and um at one point I was having a chat with Roger Daltrey and Robert Plant just looking from left to right going I can't believe this is happening right now, you know. They were yeah. like icons to me growing up, you know. Robert Plant is a big 50s fan. He is. He's a really interesting, nice person as well. He's a really nice guy. Down I've to met him, yeah, yeah, I've met him a few times and he's been super well, sweet and super nice. But yeah, he's a massive um, a fan rock of, and roll rockabilly fan. You a fan of Led Zeppelin? You know what? I never used to be, but to be honest, I am now. They're, they're really good. They were really amazing, yeah. you know. Jimmy Page's birthday today, isn't it? Oh, is it? Oh, he's a fantastic guitar player. No, I, 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 I always respected Led Zeppelin, but I wasn't like uber fan of Led Zeppelin. But I am now. I think there are, you know, having learned up a couple of Led Zeppelin songs with this, I do like a, a, a super group type thing, a little bit like what you do with Royal Machine or, uh, you know. So I've learned up a couple of their songs. I realised just how great they are. Yes, darling. Yes. Yes, sweetie pie. Marvellous. So before the Mick Ronson song, we played Alan White, a track called Oblivion, from your EP called The Experiment. Yes, sir. Your papers are in order, Alan. Thank we're going to visit the Duke. When we come back, we're going to have a bit more Alan White. See what he's got up his sleeve. We're listening to Jones's Jukebox on KLOS and my guest, Alan White. Hello. How are you, Alan? Good, that, sir. That's great. That was a, that was a Led Zeppelin. How's he doing, that guy? That was the immigrant song. Then we had Queen, Keep Yourself Alive. Excellent stuff. The birthday of uh, uh, the late Jimmy Page. It's his birthday today. Awesome. What a legend. <laughs> well, I wonder how Mozza would do immigrant song. I, I don't know, actually. Should we have a go? Was that... that Oh, hang on, what key is it? F sharp, isn't it? One second, please. Let me adjust. Oh. This. Let me adjust myself. There he goes. He's ready now. Okay. Ready? Uh, so this is this is um. Mm -hmm. 
this this uh, this is how like uh, Morrissey would kind of do this song, right? I don't think he would, but we'll have a go. <laughs> Of ice and snow, midnight sun and hot springs flow. Oh no! Oh no! The hammer and the gods. This is really not my cup of tea, you know. Uh, it's not really my style. Oh, I guess I messed up. Could um, we just do the beginning bit again? The ha ha ha. Bit? Yes. Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! Oh no! I'm going to die, and I could cry. I don't know why. I go to wet the bed, and the bed never ruin. I wrap my bed in felt, I love my own my ruin. Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. oh no! Oh no! He's gonna kill me, you know. <laughs> See, I mean. Oh my God! That was fun. Excellent. Oh, excellent. <laughs> I am a dead man, you realise? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Talking no. Of, you know, I do a good impersonation of, of Moz. Actually, I wound up the bass player, Gary Day, one day. If Moz calls you, you know, you're thinking, um, I must have messed up the night before on stage. That's what you're telling the bass player. So... I'd oh, he don't, he, that's what he did do. He would do. That's if what you messed he would up, do. He'd yeah, call you. yeah, he'd call you. Like so. Anyway, I pretended to be Morrissey one day, and I was like, um, "Hello, Gary. Uh, yes, it's um, it's me. Uh, I'm in room three o five. Yeah, yes. Can I see you? Okay, see you in ten minutes. So I put the phone down. He goes running up there. Do you know what I mean? He's like. Him. I was like, you know, what, what, what's wrong? You called me. I, I, I didn't, but come in. He's got, he's realised, you son of a, he's realised he's yeah. been duped. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice one. Yeah, yeah. You done him up like a kipper. I did, sir. I did. Oh, I used to play loads of pranks, like ghost pranks on the drummer. Like one time we stayed just outside of Newcastle. In Chesterley Street Castle, and it was like 13th century castle, and we'd all been drinking in the bar, and it was midnight. Spenny decides to go to bed. Well, he was in the old wing, and these ceilings, I, I kid you not, they were like 20 foot high, and they had knights, you know. Was it a real it, castle? Yeah, a real castle with knights and armour down the hallways and stuff. Of course, he, he, he's scared of the supernatural, is Spenny, so of course I had to wind him up on the ghost front all the time. Who's, who's scared of supernatural? The drummer. Okay. So he went to his room, and I walked past, and I saw that this one door was open with the TV <coughs> on white, you know, on a white screen, yeah. and that, that blank, you know, noise, that shh kind yeah, of yeah. noise. I looked in there, I was like, God, Spenny's gone to sleep and left his front door wide open with the TV on. I gotta do it. I went back to the room. I put a shower, white shower curtain on, and I walked into his room and it's like old wooden floors and it's all creaky and scary, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. He's gone. Ah! I jumped like out of bed. Yeah, horrified him. <laughs> Always doing stuff like that. Good fun. Why don't you do another song? Another song. Yeah. What, like uh, one of mine or? Not not another Led Zeppelin one, but. Uh... You could do one of mine, I suppose. Yeah. All right. Um, let me just this, tune this up. Is this from your EP? Yes, this is from my EP. This is the, the third song off my EP. The, the third song is called? The Death of Rock and Roll. Yes. And it's about, you know, like I was saying earlier. It's about so the death of rock and roll. Well, it's not an obituary of rock and roll, but it's just the fact that we're not hearing it 
and it's the state of the music industry today and lack of physical product and all that kind of stuff. Okay, darling. Alan White in the studio. Let's see how it goes. He's going to perform live from his all EP, right. The Experiment. Exterminate! buying records and where are the CDs now why buy the music when you can steal it all for free and when the 20th can't catch up with the 21st century and you sold your soul and you swallowed your whole it's the death of rock and roll when they carted you off into the old people's home It's the death of rock and roll You think the kids would know their history Glued to their iPhones, not paying attention to TV The news is over their heads and Ziggy Stardust is dead Into the 21st century and you sold your soul and they swallowed you whole It's the death of rock and roll And when they carted you off into the old people's home It's the death of rock and roll oh. It's down to the last of the famous in the industry to bring out some truth with wit and irony but they heard your moan from the king's throne and there's no sympathy and they sold the soul and they swallowed you whole it's the death of rock and roll when you lost your faith by playing it safe it's the death of rock and roll the death Rock and roll the death. Oh la 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 oh no no la 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 oh no no la la the death of rock and roll. Jonesy's Jukebox, Carl OS, that was Mick Ronson from the album Play Don't Worry. That was White Light, White Heat. Absolutely obviously, fantastic. Obviously originally done by the Velvet Underground. Then we had Morrissey, the National Front Disco from the album Your Arsenal, which my guest played on, Alan White. And then we had Alan White doing a live acoustic track called The Death of Rock and Roll. All right. From your EP, The yeah. Experiment, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, you know, that, that that's funny, you know, that tune was one tune I did give to Morrissey and he uh, he passed up on it, so. Death of Rock and Roll? Yeah. I wound up doing my own song to it so do you think you'll get back and do some more writing with him <sighs> i think if it was like all the original lot and um i remember it's worth seeing, I remember doing seeing. and 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 if if financially it makes sense then yeah it, you know i mean maybe i remember seeing you guys at the universal amphitheater when it was called the Universal Amphitheater, and everyone was kind of wearing West Ham shirts, or there was something to do with Bobby Moore on the screen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was you in the band at that point? 
Was that in 96 or something, around that time? I'm not sure, but everyone had like, you know, the... the, the, the Happy Martyrs. But, but the, the, hair, the, and the haircuts, you know, were all like, you know, rockabilly. Did he have two phases of rockabilly members or was that it? It, it was really us lot, I suppose. I think, it, I think it was you guys. I didn't know yeah. you guys at the time, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. the Hammers, Forever Blowing Bubbles. You're a Chelsea boy, aren't you? Yes, sir. And I'm a Gooner. Oh. I know, I'm sorry. But, uh, you you're, know. You're Arsenal. Of course, like the record. That was such a fun record to do. Yeah. You know, working with Mick was was such a blessing. Yeah. I mean, what a talented, amazing person he was. What other song did you write with Morrissey that was very popular? You're the one for me, Fatty. Oh, yeah. And then How's we that did going? that. I like, I think it... How's that go, Alan? Um. <laughs> you're the one for me, Fatty, you're the one I really, really love, and I will stay, promise you say if I'm in your way, you're the one for me, Fatty, you're the one I really, You say if I'm never in your way, uh, hey. another <laughs> hey, Buddy hey. Holly, Buddy Holly reference in there. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, wrote that one. We did certain people I know that that people say, oh, it sounds like Rider White Swan by by T T Rex. Uh, what what sounds like? Uh, certain people I know was another single we did off. Of How does that, that go, Alan? How's that go? Um, like, uh, uh, good, good, I'm trying to think. I hate to be like some people I know. They're mixing and they laugh their heads off. played it in years well you've got to admit it does sound like a bit like ride a white swan a little bit because of the uh, duh but the funny thing is is ride a white swan was in the key of a and when you oh, play them, no. when you play them back to back yeah they really don't sound that alike but weirdly enough separate they do it's yeah. really odd it so wasn't it's, intentional it's like vanilla eyes dun, dun, vanilla dun, flake. Dun, 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 dun. You mean? Dun 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 dun. dun. Oh, I, I, I totally changed that. I rewrote you that. You rewrote it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, no. What about that post you put up the other day? Vanilla, we got to talk about it. Vanilla Flake 99. It was so awesome. Well, I was in the snow. In hence, the snow. And hence I put vanilla well, ice, ice. Ice baby because I was in the snow. But what, what made me laugh so much? Because. Flake 99 is a very English thing, and a lot of Americans missed that, didn't they? Flake 99 was a... I think people know what a flake is here. They know what a flake is, yeah, but they didn't it's know the, it was a it, chocolate stick, right? No, I think I think flake, is, they've always had it here, haven't they? No, he's yeah. saying no. No, it, it, it was Fools. like crumbly Fools. chocolate that they put on an ice cream. Yeah. But that's why I laugh so much, man. Flake 99. You put the, you put the flake <laughs> into the ice cream, and it... And you get it off the ice cream man, right? Yeah, that's right. In, yeah. in his van. And you say, guess the flake died, he died. Yeah, and 99 came from the fact that it was 99 pence, right? Yeah. God knows. I, know. I believe I believe that was what it was. Sales pitch. I know. We should get a, <laughs> a sponsorship from Cadbury's. Absolutely. Cadbury's. Cadbury's? Good chocolate, though, isn't it? We're going to visit the Duke. When we come back, we'll have some more rock and roll from Alan White and Jonesy himself, thank you. have been listening. You've been listening. You've been listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on KLOS. That was Alan White, a track called The Experiment, from the EP called The Experiment. And you just did an experiment, didn't you? You, you, you checked to see if it was on Shazam and it came up. And it came up. 
I made it. You have made it. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Superstar. No, it's actually um, f officially released on all digital formats now. Yes. Um, so, but if people want to purchase CDs or records, sign records and stuff, they and they can uh, also digitally download the songs, the EP from my website, alanwhitemusic.com. So feel free to check that out. Do you have to spell the white as the white? Yeah. So you what do. is it? A L A I N W H Y T E music M dot com. <laughs> www dot y five dot nine com. six two. <laughs> That's not confusing at all. Yeah. Everyone's going to get that. No, they all spell my name wrong. Uh, it was a it was brutal at school, man. Being called Alan, spelt the way my name was spelt because it was I A L. In it. Yeah, it was like I got called Elaine. Alain, Lorraine, I mean, just, it was endless. So thank God my, my son's called Johnny. You know what I mean? I was like, give him a cool American name. Like you parents out there, don't give your kids dumb names like Cedric and Cecil. Or, well, I don't think that's here. Alfred, no, but like, or Barnaby or something ridiculous. They're, they're going to die. You're like, just don't do it. You know what I mean? I'm calling <laughs> my son Flower. I get to call my son moon child trendy sunshine winston i'm gonna know. call my son quatrain pete <laughs> <laughs> fantastic the third excellent i think he'll die at school <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming in son Ah, uh, thank you so much, Steve. I'm really honoured to be on your show, mate. I love your show, and you always play great stuff, and you're, you know, you keep it real, and you're so honest, and it's thank excellent. Thank you. And I love you. Oh. Gary Moore's up next, and we'll see you tomorrow, Thursday, at 12 Bells. Thank you.